So this over here is an i7-12700. Yep, there's no K in the end. And it costs roughly about $65 to $85 more than the 12 600k now the question is is it worth the upgrade from 12 600k to 12 700 and what are some of the differences we're gaining two extra cores so does it really give us so much more extra performance especially as a creator i wouldn't be making this video if i didn't have the answer to you so let's have a look right after this motion array is a fantastic tool for creators to make better videos and faster motion array has over 600,000 premium quality templates presets plugins, music and sound effects, stock video and photos. In a nutshell, it is a one-stop shop for all your video post-production needs. Configure the membership to suit your needs, pay annually, monthly, cancel anytime you want and enjoy your unlimited downloads. Not sure about Motion Array? Go try out the hundreds of free assets available on the website. Check out Motion Array in the video description below. So first of all, the specs. And to be honest, there's quite a lot of specs that don't mean a thing. So I'm only going to mention the things that really matter or some of the things that are characteristics of the CPU. For example, clock speeds, they don't matter a ton. Yes, you can have a lot of cash on the CPU, but unless we know the performance, it doesn't really matter. Unless we compare i7 to i7, like the same clock speeds, then it kind of matters. But anyway, I'm digressing. The specs are, this is a 12 core and 20 thread CPU. So you have eight performance cores, two threads per core, and then four efficiency cores where there's only one thread per core. It also features the UHD 770i GPU inside, which is the same as on the i5 12600K all the way to i9 and 12900K. The chip has a 65 watt TDP, but there should be a big asterisk over there because most of the time you can see up to 185 to 190 watts pulled from the socket. It supports DDR4 and DDR5 and it's not overclockable. The overclockable CPUs are only the K variants and this is not a K variant but technically it is overclockable by bypassing some of the other measures on bias but the thing is as a creator what we're focusing over here I think you should forget about overclocking the CPU. It's a little bit of a waste of time if you don't know what you're doing uh, you're most likely gonna just you know make more work for yourself than getting a lot in return. It supports 128 gigabytes of RAM DDR5 and DDR4 and the price is $365 roughly or £330 here roughly in the UK. So let's start testing. These are the test bench specs. The motherboard is an ASUS Z690 ProArt. We're using the Fantex Glacier 1 360mm AIO. We have four sticks of DDR5 memory from Kingston, Kingston Fury. Sometimes it's running 4800 MHz and sometimes no XMP is enabled and it runs at 4000 megahertz. The GPU is an ASUS TUF RTX 1390, the OS drive is a Cardia C440 and the project drive is a Seagate FireCuda 530 which also has all the benchmarks on there and the power supply is a 1200 watt ROG Thor power supply. First of all, temps and power consumption. The CPU runs rather hottish for a 65 watt TDP. That should be a big asterisk because in my test bench setup there with the Z690, I am seeing about 185 to 190 watts pulled from the socket when running the Cinebench R23 10 minute benchmark back to back, back to back. And the temperature is roughly 72 to 73 C. Bear in mind, this is inside the case where the panel is closed and the ambient temperature is roughly around 19 to 20 C. So if you're thinking about cooling the CPU with the included cooler, then uh, no way. Think again, it's a really a waste of time unless you really want to thermal throttle your CPU or just run it very, very loud. So I would not recommend that. Definitely think about upgrading the cooler to a mid-range air cooler, like this one over here, the Arctic Freezer 34 eSports 2. Fantastic cooler, or at least 280 millimeter AIO. That's what I would recommend. Okay, just a little clarification over here. The boost kind of turbo wattage, 180 watt, is configurable in the BIOS. And you can set the time limit, how long will it boost that 180? watts. If you wanted to boost there to maybe only a few seconds, one, two, three, five, maybe even 10 seconds, then even the included box cooler will be fine with that CPU because then after those few seconds, it will drop down to the 65 watt TDP, which is completely fine to cool with the included cooler. But if you do want the best out of this CPU, I recommend you adjust that time limit of the boost, turbo boost wattage 
to the maximum you can. I think in the BIOS there is a limit to like 400 and something whatever seconds. In the longer Blender runs, for example, in Victor Render, you can see that the CPU actually is slower than the Ryzen 9 5900X, for example, that has still 12 cores because that CPU pushed, you know, that wattage all the time. But our CPU after the limited 400 something seconds drops down to 65 watts and then it's not so good at like longer render scenes, for example. So in a way, the included cooler can work, but I'd really advise against it because you can adjust it in the BIOS and get much more performance out of the CPU. But in a small form factor build, it could make a ton of sense. I'm not sure if all motherboards support the time limit of the high turbo boost clock, but on my B660 Pro Art and the Z690 Pro Art, I was able to adjust it on both of these boards. So first of all, Cinebench R23 single core score. I'm not going to read all of the benchmarks out but some of the things that are the most interesting. So our 12900K is roughly 5% higher and the 12600K is roughly 5% lower. So the 12700 really slots very nicely somewhere there in the middle between the 12900K and 12600K in the single core speed. But looking at the Ryzen 5000 series then the 5900X is about 15% slower and the 5950X is a little bit higher than the 5900X but still roughly about 15% slower than what the best of Ryzen 5000 can offer which just translates into a little bit more snappier performance in everyday tasks what you do on your windows and things open a little bit faster and so on. When we move on to the multi-core then we can see that our Ryzen 5900X is slightly faster about 1% faster than the 12700K on this i7 chip. The i9-12900K is 25.6% higher, which is quite a lot, and the 12600K is roughly 19% slower. But even in this multi-core speed, we can see that it roughly slots between the i5 12600K and 12900K, but it's roughly on bar with the 5900X, which is interesting because the 5900X has 12 performance cores, 24 threads, whereas the i7 12700 has only 12 cores, but 20 threads. Moving on to Geekbench single score, which gives us more like everyday performance of the CPU or the PC. We can see that the 12700 is about 5.7% slower than the 12900K, but not so much slower now here than the 12600K. 12600K is roughly about 1.5% slower in the single core speeds, so not that big of a difference over here. Ryzen 9s are roughly 9% slower, Ryzen 7s and lowers are a bit more than that. Moving on to Geekbench 5, multi-core score on the CPU. The 12900K is 20.7% faster and the 12600K is 15 or a little bit more percent slower than the 12700. Now bear in mind here the 5900X is actually 5% slower compared to the i7-12700. Enough of synthetic benchmarks, let's have a look what does it feel like in the real world performance like Photoshop. So here's some overall score and in here I really want you to pay attention also the brackets underneath the i7-12700 because not all of the benchmarks I was able to complete with the XMP at 4800 and I had to just sack the XMP and then just you know run them with no XMP and that is 4000 megahertz so you do get a little bit of an X boost when running to 4800 megahertz so you get like a few percent here and there according to my measurements bear in mind 4000 megahertz or 4800 megahertz on DDR5 is very very safe spot in, the, in terms of the DDR5 speeds you can get them up to 6000 megahertz and so on so when running those specs of RAM then you can expect even more performance than these but these are just to compare the CPUs to each other. The 12900K is about 10% faster than the 12700 and the 12600K is about 4% slower than the 12700. Very interestingly here the Ryzen 9 5950X is about 5% slower than the 12700 which means that the single core speed really really helps with the Photoshop application and the same core count Ryzen 9 5900X is about 15% slower compared to our i7-12700. Moving on to Lightroom Classic, another photo editing application. The 12900K is the same, 5.5% faster than the 12700. Yet here the 12600K i5 is about 12% slower, much bigger difference because Lightroom can more utilize 
the multi-core score when exporting the photos or when measuring the passive aspect of the uh, benchmark which just means you know exporting or converting photos into different formats so that's where the multi-core can really shine there but still the Ryzen 9 5900X same core count is about 11 or 10.4 percent slower than the 12700 and the Ryzen 9 5950X is about 4.5 percent slower Moving on to video editing and Premiere Pro. The 12900K is about 7.8% faster. Compared to the Apple N1 Max that is very good in their encoding, you know, speeds and so on, is about 4 or 3.4% slower than the 12700. And that's the overall score. If you look at the, the like different aspects of the benchmarks, we would see that the actual GPU score or GPU effects score is much better on the i7, our test bench setup over here because we're running 1390 over there. But the Apple N1 Max, Max doesn't have a lot of graphics power to kind of run like, you know, GPU accelerated effects. Yet Apple M1 Max is very good at live playback in the standard like score where we're talking about H.264, H.265 playback. But looking at the Ryzen 9 5950X, we can see that the 12700 is 4.5% faster and the 12600K is 8% slower. Moving on to After Effects, the 12900K is 14.7% faster. That's quite a bit over here actually on uh, After Effects. But the 12600K is not that much slower, only 2.8% slower, but more Interestingly, the 5950X is about 4.2% slower than the 12700. If After Effects is a big part of your workflow, then the 12700 doesn't give you that much of an increase compared to the 12600K, but the 12900K will have a much bigger increase in terms of performance over there. Moving on to DaVinci Resolve extended overall score over here, the 12900K is 10.2% faster. In here now, interestingly, the Ryzen 9 5950X is about 1.5% faster than the 12700, but in here we didn't manage to complete the benchmark with 4800 MHz XMP enabled because the benchmark just kept crashing, so I had to drop the XMP. If we would have been able to complete the benchmark with 4800 MHz, we would have been beating the 5950X as well because we're only 1.5% faster. And usually the difference over there is more than 1.5, it's like from 2 3% or higher about that, can be up to 5 to 7% faster with the XMP added to 4800 MHz. So depending which RAM you run, if you run anything faster than 4800 MHz, then the gap between Ryzen 9 5950X and 12700 like increases even more. But the Intel i5 12600K is about 4.8% slower. So we're getting quite a nice kind of increase that about 5% slower is the 12600K and about 10% faster than the 12700. Moving on to Blender, which is another rendering application over here, bear in mind in this benchmark scores over here, the the lower the score is the better because those are seconds the more seconds the slower it is so in here we can see that the i9 12900k is about 21 percent faster than the 12700 and here the ryzen 9 5900x is about three percent faster than our 12 core i7 over here and that's because the performance cores here really make a difference the more cores the more threads you have in blender the better performance you basically have and the 5950x is obviously leading the chart which is about 26 percent faster than the 12700 and in here the 12600k is actually 17.9 percent slower in the bmw render scene over here which is quite a lot compared to like the previous increases that we've seen that are, have been roughly about five percent but interestingly here when we move on to the classroom benchmark which is a little bit of a longer rendering scene then suddenly this 12700 really starts to choke its performance and starts to run very very slow i ran this benchmark multiple times to really see if this is correct and i'm seeing the same results every single time so the 12700 now is about 11 percent slower than the 12600k which has actually 
much less cores, only 10 cores, so six performance cores and four efficiency cores compared to our 12700K, which is eight performance cores and four efficiency cores is 11% slower, which is interesting. And the 12900K is 22% faster. And the Ryzen 950X is 25 or 24.2% faster, which is absolutely insane. Now, interestingly, even the previous generation i9 12900K is about 7% faster over here. But I reckon this result over here is to do with the TDP and it can't just push all of that power through all the time but starts to run it down at lower TDP to complete these tasks. Now I'd be interesting to test this with the 12700 and the 12700K because I expect the 12700K to slot somewhere between the 12600K and 12900K but you know would have to get this 12700K in to make this benchmark. So in conclusion, what's the CPU like and would I recommend it? Now, I think actually it's a very interesting price point. So if you look at the i5 12600K, which is roughly about $65 to $75, somewhere around there, then we can see that we're gaining roughly about, you know, 5% in average gain over 12600K to 8% in video editing and 12% in Lightroom Classic. So if you're editing in Premiere Pro or using Lightroom Classic, for example, then I think this $65 is a very good investment in the performance you're getting in return. So I think it's a very awesome performance over there. And even when we look at the Ryzen counterparts like the Ryzen 9 5900X or the Ryzen 5 5600X, then the price difference isn't that far away from the 5600X and the 5900X is quite a bit more expensive compared to this 12700. Most of the time in photo and video editing applications, we're performing better than the 5900X. But on the other hand, in rendering like Blender, the 5900X is much better. Also to have the same iGPU inside as the 12900K is a huge help for creators, especially video creators, that helps with the decoding and encoding of the footage when using H.264 and H.265 playback. Now this is especially amazing for DaVinci Resolve users because every single one of H.265 codecs is accelerated on this iGPU. The news aren't so good for the Premiere Pro users but it's still better than any of the Nvidia encoders. Now about the downsides, the only downside kind of here is that the you know 12th gen motherboards can be more expensive compared to the X570 motherboards but at the same time you are getting more specs for your money as well and there are some budget versions available. But if you expect to pay the similar price for the Z690 motherboard and the X570 motherboard, then this is not gonna happen. Or the same as the Z590 than the Z690, then this is not gonna happen because Z690 provides you more features and is more expensive. So you'd have to probably like look at the lower end of the things like B660 motherboards and so on. But if you're an editor or using Adobe Creative Cloud, then I highly recommend you check out the Pro Art boards, especially the B660 Pro Art ASUS board because you will get three months for free Creative Cloud membership when considering that motherboard. So it can be a very affordable price point for you. Do I recommend this CPU? Very much so. I think it's a very awesome mid-range CPU and someone who looks for a little bit of a upgrade from 12600K for example, and they have extra 65, 75, $85, something like that to spare, then I think this is a great place to spend it because as you can see, you can get 12 or eight to 12% performance when in video and photo editing uh, applications, depending which RAM kit you're gonna go for. And in 2022, the Ryzen 5000 really starts to show its age compared to this uh, 12th gen over here. So I'd highly recommend this CPU, in my opinion, over the 59. 100x because that's um, what I've been recommending all last year but this year I think this 12 core CPU is better but bear in mind if you do a lot of blender for example rendering or 3d like v-ray or something like that then the more cores and more threads is better for you so I'd recommend going Ryzen 9 but video and photo editing this 12700 is better but this is the non-k variant what about the 12700K? How much is that one better? Well, we'd have to make another video about that. Let me know in the comment section below if you'd like to see that. I'm gonna leave the CPU in the description below if you wanna pick it up, as well as the test bench setup, if you're interested in picking any of those up. Thanks guys for watching, likes if you enjoyed it, subs if you'd like to see more, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.